Hi friends, I'm Marianne Romanat and this is Brittany Bethel and we get to serve together at Light of Christ United Methodist Church in Charlotte and we have begun this new podcast called Affirming Methodism and we welcome you um, to this episode and uh, we're here to talk about how to take steps toward becoming a more affirming, inclusive and diverse church and find a way forward and we are going to have conversations about that and we want these conversations um, to be about how the church can move forward, especially during a time of great change um, in the world and in the church in particular, and, uh, and just a, an openness that's been created to change because of the major shifts that are happening um, in our world. And we want to be able to reach this generation and the next generation for Christ. Um, we believe it's essential that we grow in diversity and practice our Methodist roots of prevenient and justifying and sanctifying grace, a discipleship through small groups, evangelism by going to where people are, um, understanding the balance between faith and good works, and, um, and hope, we hope these episodes will be uh, opportunities to learn from people that we need to hear from in order to get to this more hopeful future that we think God has for us in the Methodist Church. So today we go back to the very beginning of Light of Christ. Um, one of our guests today is Denise Hembry, um, who was part of the original core group that came from Matthews United Methodist Church to Ballantyne to start a new church. And our other guest today is Nina Johnson, uh, who began to attend Light of Christ almost 15 years ago. And Nina and her family were some of the first non-white members of Light of Christ. And her leadership has allowed us to, in recent years to make progress um, in our church through her leadership of the Be the Bridge small group. And both Denise and Nina are faithful leaders of this church, uh, members who care about this church and want to see it thrive. Uh, so we are very grateful to the two of you for joining us on this episode of Affirming Methodism. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. Yeah, of course. Um, so, Denise, we want to start with you. Uh, how did you become part of that core group that, that started the church back in 1999? And, and what excited you about being a part of a new church? Light of Christ was a vision of Ken Lyons, who was pastor at the church at the time. And it was mentioned several times in the services. And it began to, began to sound interesting to me, kind of fun and exciting um, and I just decided to go to one of the meetings and thought, well, I'll just plan to go as a one-year missionary, and I was still here. So um, <laughs> the more involved I became, the more excited I became about, about the church, and that's why I'm still here. That's awesome. Oh, that's great. So where, what were the core group's initial hopes for Light of Christ, and what were your prayers for the new church in the beginning? We had hoped to be a multicultural, multi-generational church, uh, a missional church, and we committed right away to giving 10% uh, to missions. We wanted to be welcoming and accepting people just as they are, and we wanted, of course, to be have, have a casual atmosphere and dress. Above all, we wanted to show them the love of Jesus and invite them to come to church with us, grow in their faith, and then go out and reach others as well. We prayed for our vision to come to fruition and that we would be able to reach those who were lost or questioning in their faith helping them to grow in the knowledge of the Bible and to develop a relationship with Jesus. Hmm. I'm going to ask a follow-up question. Sure. So uh, do, do you feel like you're seeing that come to be? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. That's cool. Yes. Nina, when did you uh, start attending and, and why have you stayed? Uh, we came, it was around 2009, 2010, and... We were looking for a church home. We uh, were a part of a Baptist church organization, and my parents had um, a little issue that they were trying to go to our original pastor with, but 
for whatever reason that didn't work out. So we, uh, my parents were like, we're going to be looking for a new church home. And by my mom being a nonprofit in the neighborhood that I uh, grew up in, um, of course, organizations come over to volunteer all the time. And there was one particular lady, um, her name is Sandra Gans. I'll never forget that day. She, um, it was a Make-A-Wish Foundation. And they would come over and like help with the kids, do their homework, read, make dinner, literally make my mom sit down and do nothing, <laughs> which is very hard for her to do sometimes. <laughs> But um, I heard my mom say, you know, we're looking for a church home. And Sandra immediately, no hesitation, come to our church. And I was like, okay. And she said, yeah, we're out in Valentine. And I looked at my mom again. I was like, okay, that's like 30 minutes away from us. But we were able to make it out to church. Everybody went, including my dad. And from the moment we stepped foot on... um, the YMCA campus, because that's where it was at the time. It was like everybody there greeted us like, we've been waiting for you. And the openness of the church, even though nobody looked like us, maybe like three people. And it didn't seem to matter that none of us look alike. It only mattered that we're here. Yeah, We've been waiting for you. Come sit and worship with us. We hope to see you again soon. And it was the same thing every single time we came out. Not only was that big for the kids, because they were small at the time, but from I think the deciding factor for my mom and me was the fact that it was one Sunday morning, we didn't get up. And my dad is like, we going to church or no? Nah? <laughs> and it's like, okay, I think we're on to something here. Cause at my old church, he was not really into going, but coming here to Light of Christ, it's like he looks forward to it. Even now, mm-hmm. he's looking. He looks forward to it, even if he doesn't feel bad. He still he still tries to get up, but if he's not feeling it coming out the door, he's not feeling it. But he always gets a real kick out of not being here, and then when he comes back, it's like everybody's on him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that has never changed mm. from day one. Cool. And I believe that's why we stayed, even though we've been through another pastor. And when we found out it was a woman, my mom was like, I don't know about this. My dad was like, we're not going anywhere. This is our church. Yeah. We're going to be here. And we have a bond with these people. It doesn't matter where the word comes from, as long as that person is honest and genuine about the word and they're teaching it, not just preaching it. They're doing what they're supposed to do. And to hear my dad say that, who is a man of few words, uh, yeah. You got to (laughs) listen. So, (laughs) yeah, it's like it has not changed at all, even coming out of a pandemic now and seeing how people are starting to come back to the church. And it's a lot of faces that we've never seen before. And of course, nobody looks like anybody in here. They may have a language barrier. It doesn't seem to matter because every time I'm on stage with the worship team and we're singing and I see people coming in. The faces are like glowing. Their smiles are huge. They may not understand a word we're saying, but they're just feeling it. And I'm just like, yes, this is what the church is supposed to look like. The world today looks like this. Why can't church mm-hmm. look like this? That's, That's so good. So, yeah. That's so good. Yeah. So these past two years, Nina, um, you've become a leader in our congregation. Um, I know you resist that word, but it's true. <laughs> and uh, tell us why. Um. Yeah, I don't know about the leader part, but I'm gonna let it go for right now. <laughs> but um, I want I've I've always wanted to do more in church, and fear stops me with a lot of things. And when Brittany approached me about helping her co-facilitate, be the bridge, I was like, "You sure you're talking to the right person? I'm not. No." She was like, yeah, I already put your name on the brochure. I was like, oh, my God. So uh, the running joke is Brittany made me do it. She strong armed me. (laughs) I'll take that. But in hindsight, I was like, yeah, I think I need to go ahead and stop being scared, number one. God is with me no matter what I do. So why not do this, especially be the bridge? Latasha Morrison was able to come here to the church, and we had other churches come in as well for that day. That day was awesome to me. I felt like it should have been way more people than what it was. And the fact that 
Latasha is so easy to talk to. She really opened up a lot of people's eyes to a lot of things, especially struggles of people that are not of color. And the fact that I got to walk up to her and say, how you doing? And she said it back to me, you know, <laughs> that like sticks with me forever. Mm -hmm. So to be a part of Be The Bridge and everybody in the group genuinely wanted to understand the struggle of not just black people, but people of color, period. And to be able to um, help Brittany, you know, open up eyes. If it was another lady in the group that's just like me. She has a son. Her mom, just like my parents, grew up during those times. And it un ironically, like Latasha said, church is still segregated. Mm -hmm. And I never thought of it that way. But to hear her say that out loud, it's like, you know what? It is. Yeah. Even growing up Baptist, I didn't see that many not black people at my church. Mm -hmm. right. If we go visit another church, it's not hardly anybody that's not that don't look like us so I've always raised my kids to be open to learning different backgrounds different cultures they have plenty of friends from everywhere some of them can write and speak Japanese and Korean so I'm I'm always in awe of them and because of that it's like I got to stay on top of the know so if they come to me with something I want to know what they're talking about yeah and I want to be an open book to them as well as my friends here at the church, because some people don't understand and they're really concerned. Like, I feel like I've been blind. I don't want you to be mad at me. And I'm like, oh, no, I'm not mad at you at all, because you want to know what's going on. You want to understand the issues that we have as people of color. Yeah. And that's OK. That's what I'm here for. So I, in hindsight, I want to thank Brittany for pushing me because I don't think I would have done it if she hadn't put my name on Sure. Do what you got to do but sometimes. But I'm so glad right. I did. Yeah, that's great. When we think about the church and in the conversations we've had, whether it's in a small group or just at lunch, um, how how does it how does this church how do other churches grow in diversity when most leadership is white? Yeah. You know, in the United Methodist Church, you know how or or in your case, the church you grew up in, I guess most leadership was black, right? So how do we continue to grow? in diversity, what, what are things that we need to be doing to, or other churches need to be doing to grow in diversity? What is your opinion on that? Well, I strongly suggest that everybody do uh, be the bridge. That's number one. Mm. I, I'm, I find myself saying, be the bridge, building bridges. Like we have to connect somewhere. Yeah. And in order for everybody to understand what's going on in your church so you can help that person in the church, it may be a situation that you have no idea about. Sure. But as long as you, you've done the Be the Bridge course, and yes, it is long, but it is definitely worth it. I didn't even read the book. Denise let me read her book <laughs> just so I could be able to know what everybody was talking about. But a lot of the stuff I already knew. Right. But there were some things from Latasha's perspective that were really good for me to read up on. So doing the course, and I didn't really read the book at first, I was still in the know because... It was a lot of things that she had touched on. I, I'm a reader, so I, <laughs> I read a lot. Yeah. But as far as the leadership, when it's not, when they don't look like what's in their church, you got to make some changes. Mm. And I say be the bridge is definitely a start. Yeah. You say leadership needs to change. Like what, what aspects of leadership, in your opinion, need to change? Well, if they're able, if they're, if they're, everybody has to be on the same page and be willing to bring in new, new faces. Sure. Let, let the leadership reflect the body of the church, the body of Christ. Yeah. And everybody has to be on one accord with that as well. It may be a little awkward. It may be a little tough, but there's nothing wrong with having a conversation so everybody can understand yeah. what's going on. You ask questions, you make sure that they're on board with whatever the bot, the leadership as a whole needs to be on board with. And what would that look like two years, five years, whatever, like yeah. have a goal, have a plan, but make sure that first we got to get along. Yeah. Everybody has to be on the same accord. Sure. And the number one thing is God. Yeah. God is the center of everything. So why not let somebody come in that is willing to help along with the change Sure. That's and good. be open to it. Yeah. That's another one. You got to be open to the change. Yeah. It's hard work. 
Yeah. I mean, I think I think that that course taught me a lot, but also it just taught me how hard this work is going to be, how long it's going to take, mm-hmm. right? Like to it's it's not something that we can get impatient with. We have to like keep just plodding along, really, yeah. you know. And I I think about like people of color in Charlotte specifically, just like everything with how uptown has changed and how Charlotte is changing as a whole, like it's so important for us to be in the know of that, to be able to say, Hey, like this is happening around us all the time. And you've helped me understand that in a way that I never would have otherwise, you know? And so, yeah, I think, you know, you, you say people on stage looking like you changes things. I, I believe that I, you know, I believe that it doesn't have to be paid staff, but just like leadership from the stage has to reflect the congregation. I think we're seeing more of that here. Uh, and it's changing us. Yeah. That's right. When the stage looks different, mm-hmm. the congregation feels freer yes. to be who they are. Yes. And um, and for me, that's been like the most exciting thing to watch in the last four months, five months. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's been really cool to it see is. the change and to see the comfortability of people, you know, it's just really awesome. Yeah. And I think that I've seen God confirming those changes by sending more people who are international, especially. It's been really interesting around not only on Sundays, but during the week, I keep meeting people who speak another different language. I mean, it's just, it's just fascinating the area that we get to serve in. Yeah. I mean, how blessed are we? How many churches live in such a diverse multicultural area? Um, We are so fortunate. And so I, I see God confirming what's happening on the inside of our church mm-hmm. uh, with our growing and our understanding yeah. and trying to, trying to be open to each other, trying to learn from each other. And then God sends people to us uh, who we don't even know how to communicate with. I mean, it's just, it's a challenge, you know, and it's, a, it's an opportunity for us. And technology is in such a cool place that we can talk through Google Translate Yes. We can talk through things like that um, that I think is really, really beautiful and really exciting. Uh, and God is sending us leaders of, of several different nationalities That's to right. be able to translate during services or to be able to be active in that. I think I do think that part of our leadership change sparked that because there was at least a, an acknowledgement of like, oh, we're trying to reflect the community more. I do think that that was a big part of it. And uh, it's been really cool, like you said, to see so many just different people come and be a part of it and feel welcomed. Nina, I've repeated what you said earlier to a ton of people. Like I want us to be a church that's waiting for people, you know, and if they speak a different language, then we have the technology to be able to like overcome that obstacle. Or if they're from a different part of town, you know, that we have knowledge and people that we're like, yeah, we, we, you know, we can connect people to one another. And I think that's the point of the church, right. Is to connect to other people connect to God, you know? And so I think, yeah, God's showing us that by doing that, we're able to connect people more. Yeah, could I jump in here for just a second? Love for you to. Um, you were talking about, or Marianne, you were talking about um, how people of different nationalities have come here. And at one of our outreach um, events recently, we had people from everywhere, and Brittany shared that she heard at least four different languages in the church lobby and that to me is it's it's so exciting and so heartwarming to hear that Mm -hmm. and to and to know that we're reaching out to people of all nations all colors Mm -hmm. everything i mean we're, we're just open we're totally opening up and showing how welcoming we are which we always have been but now it's just more and more obvious sure. because of what's coming in. Sure. And I think, to Nina's point, Be the Bridge had a big part of that. Yes, for sure. Because we at least, you know, like 15 of us were able to sit down and say, let's talk about these really, really hard things. Let's lament. Let's repent. Let's reconcile. And then let's go learn about as many places as we can and just be educated enough so that when someone does walk in, we at least have a basis of understanding, which I think is really exciting. Yeah. So Denise, I'm curious about your perspective, having been here from the very beginning. Um, Mm -hmm. What do you see God doing in this post-COVID season, this time of great change? Um, What do you see God doing at Light of Christ? And how is that related to your prayers as a core group? 
I am so excited. So excited. God is bringing a fresh wind of change to light of Christ. And it's just been so exciting for me because there's such an air of positivity and excitement now that, you know, it's just makes everything just seem like there, there's so many possibilities. I just can't wait to see where he takes us next. And we, <clears throat> now our hopes and prayers have come to fruition. Yes. We are where we visioned ourselves being. And that, as a core member, that just makes me so excited um, that we are where we had visioned ourselves. It's great. 22 years ago, almost 23. So that's exciting. Yeah, I was just going to say, I hope, you know, I tell my friends all the time, like, I have one friend in particular, he's like over religion, but I get why he's over religion, why he's over the church. But he's always asking me, what you guys doing this week? What's going on next week? And I told him about me being a part of Be the Bridge and how my friend Denise here is always saying, "We this is what we wanted, multicultural, multi-generational. And I, I just hope we're making y'all proud. Oh, I'm so proud. <laughs> I just hope we're making y'all proud because, oh, I mean, it's so definitely proud. happening. And yes. it is, like, booming. Especially and I'm now. I'm very excited to see what's next. Yeah. And I'm hoping that we can lead more Be The Bridge groups and spark more people to want to be a part of that to just to understand. It's, and it's not, oh, you did this and your people. It's none of that. Right. None of that at all. So I'm I'm just hoping that we can inc incorporate that more, continue to make Denise and every, the core members proud because mm -hmm. we want to be multi-generational, multicultural, and let everybody know, hey, you are welcome here. Sure. It doesn't matter what you look like, where you come from, even how you identify. None of that matters. Right. We just want you here. We want you to know that we love you just like God loves you, regardless of where you come from, even where you are in the middle of your life right now. We want you here. So we've started this podcast, Affirming Methodism, uh, to embrace diversity, to embrace inclusion in the church. And it's our way of exploring the church with you. And we hope that you'll join us in these conversations. We don't want this to be something you just listen to, but we want it to be something that you interact with. And so leave comments, reach out to us. We want to have conversation. We want to learn from you uh, and, and how you all are doing it as well. Um, our congregation, Light of Christ United Methodist Church, is in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, and th that's our audience. That's who we're hoping to talk to. But we also know this is going to be shared outside of that. And so if you're outside of Light of Christ um, and want to know more about what's going on here, we invite that conversation. Please uh, reach out to us. Uh, we want to be a church that welcomes all people um, and to move into a hopeful future in the United Methodist Church. Uh, and and it's specifically Light of Christ. We, we are all around this table very hopeful for what God is doing in this place and what God is going to continue to do uh, through multi-generational talking to, we're excited to talk to some of our students um, in, the, in an upcoming episode. Uh, they are really, if I'm going to be honest, for me, what sparked a lot of this change um, and, and got us moving. And so i um, really excited to talk to them and to explore that. Join us next time for our next regular episode, Affirming Methodism, which will be released monthly on the last Wednesday of every month. You can find us on Spotify, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, and YouTube by, ser by searching Affirming Methodism Pod. You can follow us on any social media at Affirming Methodism Pod as well. Our next episode will be released on June 28th. We hope that you'll hit subscribe so you don't miss new content as it's released. Until then, remember, love God, love your neighbor, and affirm and celebrate the beauty in you. Thanks so much for joining us this week. Thank you.